sitting on to do a hard hat tour of opens before you open, which I am. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's fun now to be returning to do uh, multiple hard hat tours, I guess, of the Ronald McDonald House as we get ready to open too over the next year. So I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to come. And I'll just start off a little bit by telling you just a little bit about our mission, just so you have an understanding of what that is. But we provide a supportive place for families to stay when their child's receiving medical care. And we support programs that directly support and improve the health and well-being of children. So that's at our core. And that's truly what the foundation of this house is going to be built on, that mission statement and what's important to our charity in terms of helping support children and families, sick children and families. That's critical to us moving forward. Just a little bit about our history and how we came to be. It actually started with a pro football player, seeing a lot of parents in lounges, hanging around, sleeping, and he said, we need to do something about this. And he went to his boss at the Philadelphia Eagles who had connections, and they got a lot of local people involved, and the local McDonald's owner operators funded the first house through the sales of Shamrock Shakes. So that's how that first house was built in the 70s, and now there's over 350 houses globally. So globally, here's a, a brief understanding of where we're at. We are actually affiliated 90% of all children's hospitals in the world. So this is one of those areas that has a pocket where we don't have that affiliation. So we're, it's a priority for our global office to expand and look at those areas where there are children's hospitals. So this was a key priority for us in terms of our global organization. There's over, like I said, over 350 houses, 365, and we serve about 7.1 million families through our programs. Um, so that's just an incredible amount of families and children that we're impacting. Hello, come on in, how are you? Good. Locally, our impact, just so you can have an understanding of our charity chapter, we cover 29 counties. And so again, uh, Peoria County, this tri-county area, the key portion of our central Illinois region and what we're looking to impact. So we looked at, and uh, a couple of years ago, and I'll come back to this, a couple, three years ago actually, we did a medical feasibility study of this entire region because we wanted to look and see where was the need where was the need in our area, and how could we meet that need? So it started the process to really look at Peoria at that time and gather data from the local medical facilities and area providers for families. And that's one of the ways we came to select Peoria was through that medical feasibility study and those needs that were identified. One thing that's really important for us to point out this is about the cost right now in our region that it co the cost is to our charity to provide services to a family, about $88 a day. And actually, um, how we're funded is almost 100% publicly funded, with the exception of just a few grants. So that's key for you to know because we do not charge our families to stay. There's a no cost charge. Um, no, I shouldn't say no cost charge. There's no fee uh, for our families to stay with us for as long as is needed. They're able to stay with us free of charge. And we're only able to do that because of that last point, which is that we're almost 100% publicly funded. And so it's supporters and communities like yours that are, it's going to be really important for us moving forward to be able to provide those comforts of home. A few Peoria facts before I go into the site, which is of course what you're um, interested about from a downtown perspective. This is about a $7 million capital campaign project. We have over half the funds committed currently, and we're working to get another $1.5 million committed by our groundbreaking, which I'll, I'll get to soon. Um, the average cost of a hotel stay for a family is about $127, so again, Families that might be staying with us for months at a time will not have those costs. And we're planning right upon opening, serving 22 families a day and over 700 families annually. So the need is great. The reason for our presence and coming to this region is because of that need. We want to help meet that need and help these families and children. And this is also um, a great point to, to note is that the average length of stay for a family might be 11 nights, but it can be up to months at a time. 
So again, a family could be with us right down the street for up to a year. We've had families stay with us in this region and other Ronald McDonald House programs for up to a year. So imagine being away from your home and your job and maybe even your other children for months at a time. So it's a very stressful time and we really look to alleviate those stresses. So when we looked at uh, this area, what was <coughs> critical to us was finding a site that was centrally located to the medical community. It was so important for us to be able to get our families to their children as quickly as possible because sometimes you know a minute is critical in terms of reaching them so we looked at sites very close by and this is the Google uh, Street View of where we're at so obviously right now we're sitting right here <laughs> and um, we'll be going up right to this location so that was before that site was demoed but we're just right up the street uh, from where you're sitting right now, which is very, very exciting. So starting with the Google Street view and then going to this view, uh, thanks to River City Construction, they provided this drone picture and River City Construction and Farnsworth Group are our partners on this project. This picture shows the site before it was demoed. So this is the uh, about a half an acre right there. And you can see the Scottish Rite building um, the Catholic Diocese parking lot, and then this is a parking lot that we've acquired across the street through Dental Arts Lab. So our families are going to actually um, be able to, I can use this, um, park right here, and then also we're going to work with the diocese uh, to park there as well as the Scottish Rite. So our neighbors have been really good to us in offering to work with us on parking for our families and the volunteers, which is great. And then moving on, just a couple other facts about this. So again, it was very important to us that we were close to the medical community. So it's less than a half a mile walk right up the street to the Children's Hospital. We're working with both hospitals to get an MOU in place to provide shuttle service for our families to and from the hospital from our doors. We're working with the city of Peoria, which has been wonderful um, in supporting this project thus far, and the mayor and the councilwoman who's here. She had a meet and greet last night, which was really well attended. So we're really working hard to engage the community and get support of local leaders and the city um, in this project improvement to the downtown area. Uh, it's, it's going to be about 40,000 square feet, the building. It'll be four stories, and it'll have a number of common sort of um, rooms to it, but also private bedrooms and bathrooms for the family. So let me be the first to invite you. Mark said you rotate for meetings. When we open, we're going to have a community room. So you all will be welcome to come and have a meeting at the Ronald McDonald House. We won't have beer, but you can walk up to open and have it. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to get board approval to have any liquor on site. So uh, Don, you can help with that, right? <laughs> um, but anyway, this is just a great location because it meets so many of those points for us in, in being a part of the fabric of the community here in the downtown area, close to the medical district that's growing and just uh, very convenient for the hospitals and for the St. Jude Medical Clinic. So we're very, very excited about that. And then the construction timeline, which you might all be interested in, we have our groundbreaking plan for mid to late September and then our grand opening is planned for fall of 2019. So it'll be about a 14 month project, right Cody? Yep. And uh, no pressure. <laughs> and so hopefully there, the weather in central Illinois will cooperate and we'll be able to follow that timeline as planned and uh, continue to move forward. But that's the site now demo. You got to see the Google Street View and the drone picture and you can look out the window and see that it's been demoed. Um, but that is the, the site right now. And we just have so many positive comments from individuals in the city. I think, Councilwoman, you could testify to that as well. Just the amazing public support about it being good for the community and good for the neighborhood. And so we're really, really happy um, with the positive feedback we're hearing thus far. And then I just have to close. You should, yes. Go ahead and explain what this um, happened. He has brought this and his children uh, had drawn this and some other pictures and just to welcome them to the neighborhood. And I mm -hmm. thought it was just such a nice addition. Mm -hmm. um, a, a family, he, uh, Andy was there with his wife and three children. 
and they were very happy to be there, very excited, and this is something that they drew, and there was a couple other also uh, drawings there. So that, that just il illustrates how the community has been very welcoming. In fact, I spoke with someone today who said that um, his, his nephew and, and uh, the, his brother were uh, Ronald McDonald House uh, recipients of the, the kindness there in the city that they are in. So he was very excited about it, something I'll be talking to Cody about. It was someone from Gipsco. Okay. And so uh, uh, Justin Ellis yep. uh, has a nephew who uh, stayed at Ronald McDonald House's mm -hmm. family. So I'll, I'll visit with you later. That's great. Well, I, yeah, I wanted to, to say that, the, again, the um, just the reception from the community has been wonderful, and I know you've experienced the same. This area has just been extremely welcoming, and we're really thrilled to be part of the downtown area and help with the development of the district. And so I just wanted to leave with my contact information, too. If you uh, need to contact me, you can reach me at any time. That is our Springfield address, but right now I have a Peoria PO box, so if you need to reach me, or a Peoria phone number that we recently opened as well, um, is 401-2525, if you need to reach me here locally. So I would be glad to take any questions, and, and I have fortunately someone here from Farnsworth Group who's designing the build and River City doing the construction. If you have any questions for me and I can't answer, I can engage our park project partners. Kelly, yes. uh, what is the easiest way, if someone wants to donate, what is the easiest way to do that? Sure. The easiest way is through our website, rmhc-centralillinois.org, online, and I do have information that I'll hand out to everybody <coughs> here. But that's definitely the easiest way to do it. Or you can send it to our P.O. Box in Peoria, P.O. Box 5354, um, if you would like <coughs> to send it via regular mail. But we're definitely looking to continue to raise funds and uh, raise about another million and a half by September is our goal. So any help is much appreciated. And if there's anyone you feel might be uh, willing to support the project, don't hesitate to put me in touch with them, him or her. Are there any, are there any fundraisers that, that you're aware of that are, that are to be organized and planned that are sure. coming up? We have a couple of fundraisers coming up. One is at Reaver Ridge. It's called Swing for the Love of It. It's a golf outing that'll be held on September 11th. So that is definitely a fundraiser that you all are welcome to participate in. And then we will also be having a gala that the Dax Foundation is hosting that will benefit the Ronald McDonald House. And that'll be November 9th with more details to follow. So those are two fundraisers coming up in the very new, near future that are helping <coughs> this, uh, this build project out questions we'd love to have you so whether you like to go to a gala or golf or we have a, a mix or both right <laughs> absolutely yes I was just could you share where, where uh, McDonald's fits into the picture here? sure and, sure and yeah. there, so. absolutely so they're our mission partner I mean from the beginning I shared the story with you of how that first house was built and so one of the things that we do like to help un those understand is Probably about a third of our operations, annual operations, comes from in-store McDonald's campaigns. Mm -hmm. So what that means is the donation boxes that you might put your pennies or your dimes or your nickels in every time. Also, uh, when they sell hearts for us through Give a Little Love, if you've ever been in the McDonald's the month of February, they're selling hearts for a dollar. Those dollars locally in those 29 counties, any McDonald's store, through those in-store campaigns, those funds come back to help our chapter. So that is something really important that a lot of people don't understand. Um, the mm -hmm. local owner operators are voting to do those promotions as a cooperative and to support a project. So uh, Terry Clark is a local McDonald's operator here in Peoria that owns the stores. Um, and he is co-chairing the campaign and the McDonald's operators locally have committed to raise $500,000 through various measures, whether it's an in-store promotion or um, providing a penny for Happy Meal Sold, a variety of ways that they're looking to help raise those dollars. So that's a great question that a lot of people think, you know, there's various ways we're funded, but that is definitely a, a critical part through that mission partnership. But a lot of it comes to those in-store campaigns. Does that help clear that up for you? Yes. Yeah, good. Good. Great. Could you also, Kelly, 
Kelly, and, and I, I think you touched on it, but uh, people that, uh, families that would stay at this facility, mm -hmm. is it it's from any, the youngest age up to 18? Is up through their 22nd birthday. Even 22nd birthday, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Up through their 22nd yeah. birthday. Yeah, and and there's there's really no timeline in a sense, There's right? no you timeline. Know, as short or as long mm -hmm. as it may need, depending on their, their situation. Correct, yes. Yeah. That's pretty incredible, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's definitely. Um, part of what our, our mission is about for Ronald McDonald House Charities is through that 22nd birthday that there is you know, no fee to stay and they're able to stay with us as long as is needed uh, to help provide for their child's illness. And this would be for patients at uh, OSF or Unity Point, correct. is that correct? correct? Or it's not affiliated with any specific hospital? That's specific absolutely correct, yeah. yes. Yeah. Any area medical facility would be able to um, refer a child and their family to us. So you also might have folks that are coming in for, um, you know, a day for a referral service for ear, nose, and throat. I mean, it could be something, just a one night stay that they might stay over with us. So it could be in or outpatient. Interesting. How does this compare, the only, is it correct that the only other Outside of Chicago metro area in the state of Illinois, the only other Rowland McDonald houses in Springfield yes. in the entire state. Mm -hmm. That's that was surprising to me. Yep. So this is the second one. How what is the relative size of the facility in Springfield compared to the new one here? This one will be about a third larger. So there's 14 rooms in Springfield, and that house has actually gone undergone two renovations and, and builds. So it started off as eight rooms, then it went to 12, then it went to 14. Um, so we look at that medical feasibility data very closely to determine what the room need is, and that's where we came up with the 22 rooms, was the data provided to us and through our room estimation procedures. I won't get into the details um, as it's technical, but that's where we came up with the, the 22 rooms was through that data. So it will be larger, but the medical district here and the subspecialties and the needs with the St. Jude Clinic and other uh, you know, priorities here just definitely justify a 22 bedroom facility. And the, the one thing I did mention is we will be providing on that floor floor, I mentioned it was four floors, it will be shelled out for future growth. So if um, as time progresses, say we're tracking the, the needs over a two to three, four year period, if it's showing a need for continued growth, we'll be able to build out the fourth floor down the road to add up to 12 more rooms. So that was very also strategic. Um, I, I'm not the expert with construction, but through this whole process, they've advised us that obviously if you want to grow down the future, we're landlocked, right. we can't go out, we have to go up. So we are trying to prepare for that down the road mm -hmm. as best as possible. Sounds smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a distance like outside of whatever medical facility that you're at that you have to live in order? Yes, so we have really two different programs. We have a days only program where families that would live more local and not need to travel and stay overnight would be able to come in and have meals and use laundry facilities, take a shower. But then in order to be able to stay overnight, they'll need to live at least 30 miles away. So traveling into Peoria to be able to stay overnight. We have to do a priority from that perspective. So those are the numbers we typically use. Are there any, any anyone in the audience have any questions for Kayla about the project? Or not? Martha? What's your typical occupancy rate? In other words, are you always full or do you always have a room or so available for a guy So um, I am sure uh, the hoteliers can talk about occupancy rates just as well as we can <laughs> too. But we have a goal when we look at our occupancy rates of being at around 80%. Because then sometimes it's going to be, you know, 100% with a wait list of 10. And Sometimes there might be, you know, five rooms available. So we want it to be around an average of that 80% mark. When it gets over that, that's when we look at expansion. Okay. And uh, when you are full, or when you are full, mm -hmm. how do you prioritize people uh, for the first availability? Well, I don't even know. What sure, sure, sure. We are hopefully going to mitigate that from the beginning by having the 22 rooms, so we don't have that wait list. Um, that's the, the first goal, is to not have a wait list and be able to serve every family that has the need. But if we do have a wait list need, 
that it really is sort of a first come first serve as those referrals come in unless uh, we also have life threatening conditions perhaps as well. Sure. Just a comment. Um, so it's been probably two and a half years now since I was a neighbor to that building. Um, but the investment you guys are making and the investment that the charities have made in this building, um, since I've moved to Peoria, it's just, it's been a complete turnaround of what our block was. Um, I always love the character of it, but I, I feel like this really adds to the community. I'm sad we had to lose um, this historic building to a fire. Um, but the ones that you took out, you know, you're adding more than you took away. Um, and I think Ronald McDonald House is a charity that um, I've supported since I was a little kid. I had a friend who, who was in there. Um, I wonder if you guys still take the pop tabs because I was still collecting them. We do. Yeah. <laughs> People um, hand them to me everywhere I go. So, so yes. I have jars of pop tabs in my house because uh, I didn't know how to raise money from them. Uh, but this is really, it's a really great fit for the neighborhood, um, and it's a really great fit just um, kind of transitioning downtown from from the business sector to, to more of a residential. It's a really great step down into that neighborhood field, so I'm really glad you're coming. Thank you. Thank you. We are thrilled. We are absolutely thrilled. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I, I was going to say a similar thing, not the pop tops, but the, uh, <laughs> that was a good one, but the, uh, but the, the the investment and improvements in the North Valley, including residential improvements with, uh, uh, with, with homes being built and more investment and uh, uh, the, uh, you know, young, the Spalding Pastoral Center and, and you know, quality buildings like other diocese facilities and the Peoria Fire Central. You go several blocks this direction, and it's it's solid, and it's getting better. The Four Points is right on the edge of downtown that way, so these are the hospital investments and improvements, uh, nothing but looking up, and that, that's really terrific. So we're very, very pleased that uh, you guys will be breaking ground in September. And be done. Yeah, and more so. How, is, it, you go, girl. How is more, how is more spelled? M-O-R-E-R. -E -E I said, how do you spell more? You say more. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh yeah, there you go. Exactly. Okay. Well, well thank you Kelly, so thank much. Thank you for the for the you know bringing this project to Peoria, and I know it'll be really well supported. And uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.